the Chicago Bulls seem set to go to a new phase of their roster by this year's trade deadline. But I'm going to talk about today why, unless coaching improves, whatever next version of the Chicago Bulls roster doesn't matter if coaching and drafting doesn't improve from the front office as well. We're going to get into all that, plus preview the game tonight against the Orlando Magic right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, Let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So I want to start it off with this. We all have heard and talked about and broken down with the trade rumors and what's going on. Should the Bulls retool, rebuild, whatever else happens. And one of the things that has constantly stayed in my mind, even about this topic, is that if whatever whatever happens, right? Let's say that we do a retooling. You know, now it's kind of been made and, and been made clear. If you guys haven't checked out me and Pat's uh, interview with Darnell Mayberry over on uh, the Locked On Bulls, make sure you guys go and check that out. So it's kind of been made more clear now that it's not just a agreeing to part ways from the Bulls and Zach Levine, or that they're more open to it as been presented. It's more so that Zach Levine has made a basically a trade request or wants to see the, the team drastically improve. But with that said, right? I look at this and say, while everything, I'm going to be clear, everything, I'm not saying that everything wrong with this team is solely on the, the shoulders of Billy Donovan. But here's what I will say, is that whatever the next phase of the Chicago Bulls is, if they go into that next phase and expects Billy Donovan to be uh, the coach of that throughout that next phase, we're going to end up right back where we are. And Billy Donovan, you guys know, I've said it consistently, I don't think he's a terrible head coach. I won't go that far as to saying that, but that doesn't mean he's the, he's the right head coach for this team. Right. And when you look at Billy Donovan and his faults as a coach and where he's come, it's always been kind of the same thing where he is. Lack of adjustments. If he go if he's in, in there in the game against a, another coach as a, a strategist, he's, he's just going to be out coached. Right. And you've seen it at high levels as far as getting to the playoffs. And then we've had struggles of even getting to the playoffs as a Chicago Bulls team. Yes. This time with OKC Thunder, he was above 500. Every single year he was the coach there. The, the lowest amount of wins he had with the OKC Thunder was 44. That would have actually put him towards the top of what we've done here in Chicago. The most wins he's had so far is 46 wins. Billy Donovan has a career uh, win percentage with the Chicago Bulls at 41%, and that is not going to cut it. And then when you look at even more so, if this Bulls team does go younger, right, even if we'll, we'll say the word rebuild, retool, whatever it is, but if they do go younger and try to, reconstruct some things right there's a lot hanging on whatever this team gets back in the eventual Zach Levine trade right uh DeMar DeRozan we've already heard now that he he is kind of open to staying but he really wants to take a look at what this roster is going to look like and what the direction of the team is and I tell you what if Billy Donovan is your coach leading that next direction I don't feel too confident in the Bulls coming out of it on the other side any better than what we are now Billy Donovan, not only in his in-game coaching, and like I said, everything's not on him. A lot is on player execution as well. But when you look at Billy Donovan, the lack of rotations, uh, the, the lack of using players to, the, to their biggest strengths, right? The, the stagnant um, offensive game plan. Billy Donovan is, is a coach that he's going to be best if you have a high-level point guard or a point guard that believes in the system. We've seen it. Lonzo, right? We've seen it with uh, Chris Paul. We've seen it with Shea. We've seen it with Russell Westbrook, right? We've seen it with, uh, with Pat Bev to a degree, and Pat Bev is a, is a point guard that really buys into the, the, the system that Billy Donovan has. He loves Billy Donovan. You've heard it through uh, all of his comments. Anytime Patrick Beverly has ever talked about Billy Donovan, it's been glowing. But then when you look at the importance of kind of building a culture, right? The Chicago Bulls aren't a team that has a generational talent. We aren't a team that has, even right now, a, a team, a, a player that you can look to build around going forth in your future that you think is going to be or get you to the point of being this team that can compete for more than just sneaking into the playoffs. And Billy Donovan has shown if he doesn't have that player, he damn sure isn't going to develop him. And that is one of the th biggest things that stands out about Billy Donovan in whatever this next phase is. Like I said, I still think a, a blow it all up scenario isn't likely to come from what we've heard from Darnell Mayberry, what we've even seen from the front office. But let's say that it does come. Is Billy Donovan the coach? Do you trust Billy Donovan to really grow and develop whatever that next team is? Keep in mind, right? Th this upcoming draft, it's not like the, there's 
this high-level superstar generational talent you look at in it. The next one coming up is 2025 with Flag, right? But outside of that, there's some really solid talent in this draft. But I don't know if I want Billy Donovan to be the one guiding that development. Yes, we have a new player development staff and team and things like that. But when you really just look at what Billy Donovan has been as a coach, he's a coach that relies very heavily on his star level players. He just does, right? And, and, and unless you have that, I don't, and even if you did have that, we've seen that Billy Donovan can only go so far as to do that. So if the Bulls are going to go forth in this path of going technically rebuild, retool, whatever it is, I know Billy Donovan still has the secret extension. I know we still don't know how long or the money that's on that extension. And I will be admit, even in me saying this, it's highly unlikely that Billy Donovan is removed anytime soon as the Chicago Bulls head coach. But you got to ask yourself, if the Bulls are trying to jumpstart this next phase of the team, even if we keep Billy Donovan a year or two, whatever it is in that time, how much is that going to potentially set back any young players that you get to, 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 to refresh this Bulls roster? And I, again, I, I like to be somebody who likes to be realistic. I don't like to be hyperbolic. I don't like to blame everything. If you guys have watched me for a while, I don't blame every struggle of anything that goes on with this team or any one aspect. There's always a combination of a few. But I tell you what, I don't see the scenario in which Billy Donovan and his limitations as a coach and his limitations in developing talent do not hurt the Chicago Bulls in whatever the next phase that we have is. And that again, I'm not blaming him on what Patrick Williams has or has not become. I'm not blaming him for Dalen Terry not necessarily being ready. I'm not blaming him for us not seeing Julian Phillips or Ornolop Batim. I'm not necessarily blaming just that on Billy Donovan. But I tell you what. It, I don't trust that we've we've been, we've been able to see the best out of those players either with Billy Donovan as the head coach. I just don't think that he's drawn up a system or had had a game plan in place to really focus on the development of the players. And so Billy Donovan did not want to be part of a re rebuild in Oklahoma City. That is part of the reason why he agreed to leave there. And I think that if the Bulls do go this full rebuild that a lot of Bulls fans are hoping for, it better come via Billy Donovan also agreeing and, and, and maybe he stays for a year or whatever else. But I think eventually it has to get to that situation to realize it's time that Billy Donovan isn't the guy, right? And in this rehaul of the roster, also reevaluate what you have here with coaching and what you what is the most that you can really expect this coaching staff to get. I wouldn't trust Billy Donovan. If you gave us Ben Matherin, if you gave us uh, – Wimby is different. He's a different – but gave us Chet Holmgren, whoever it is on this team, I'm just saying had we drafted those players – I don't think that we'd look at them the same under a Billy Donovan coach system. So to me, again, Billy Donovan isn't a terrible head coach, but that doesn't mean he's a good head coach for this team. And he's definitely not the coach that I would want personally leading the next phase of what the Chicago Bulls roster is. You guys can let me know what you guys think on that down below. This is kind of my thoughts and my feelings on it. Like I said, Billy Donovan has had his issues, but when we've seen Billy Donovan be at his best, he's had really a, a superstar almost there. And specifically, at that point guard position. And unless we're going to go out and get that, I don't really see Billy Donovan being the right guy to lead a next generation of Chicago Bulls players and, and one that may not have a star level player here. That's my personal opinion. But with that said, right, we talk about, we talk about the young talent on this team. With that said, and this is why I say I don't blame everything, any, I don't blame er everything on any one aspect of the team. Because if we're moving forward and we're getting this draft compensation or whatever it's going to be, AK and Eversley have to hit on their draft picks better. When you just look at the, the players that we potentially passed on in drafts, right? When you look at the Devin Vassells, the Tyrese Halliburtons, right? I, I try not to always just go to the Tyrese Halliburton. I know that's an easy one uh, to bring up, and I understand why, right? I definitely understand why. But even, even Walker Kessler, right? Th it, these are players that definitely would have helped the Chicago Bulls, even this version of the team, much more than who we ended up drafting on. And while this, I understand the thought process but, but behind possibly going, um, you know, high upside with the young players that the Bulls have drafted, when, when it really just comes down to it, you have to at some point hit on an actual talent that isn't just a theoretical talent, but you have to hit on somebody that has that high upside. And right now, we've not seen the Chicago Bulls front office draft a player that, that seems like they're going to hit that high upside ceiling again. This is, I'm not including Julian Phillips in this because we just don't know what Julian's going to be. And I'm not saying that Dalen Terry and Patrick Williams don't still have time to develop, but I'm just saying that you that they have to make better decisions. Devin Vassell, Tyrese Halliburton, these are some players that went, Aaron Naismith, these are some players that went after Patrick Williams that, of course, 
Most mocks had them going after Patrick Williams, so I can't blame that completely on the front office. But how different would this team look had we just made one of those choices, right? Just one of them, right? We gave up two first-round picks, so that is what it is there. Uh, you know, I wish we would have been able to keep those first-round picks because I think that would have definitely helped this team a lot more than what it ended up being. But outside of that, right, and then you 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 look at the the, the Walker Kessler, Dalen Terry draft, right? Walker Kessler could have helped this team so much more. Other players drafted after Dalen Terry that I kind of think would have fit more. Malachi Branham would have fit more. Uh, Walker Cuss, we already talked about. Mojan Bochamp, I uh, kind of hit or miss. He is having, he's, they're actually playing him down in, in Milwaukee out of need. So r- right there, uh, uh, Nikola Jovic was a player that I was extremely high, uh, high on in that draft. So you can't keep missing on draft picks. And I think with the combination of missing on a bunch of picks, right, and not getting the guys that ended up being the true high upside guys in that, we need to see this front office in whatever this next, like I said, regardless of what this next phase is, a team that does not pay the luxury tax, which is a mandate by ownership that's not necessarily on the front office, one of the key things that you can still be successful in that is drafting well. This Bulls team has to find a way to draft better and more consistently. They have to do it. If they don't, then we're going to keep finding ourselves behind the eight ball. We're going to keep finding ourselves behind the eight ball and wondering why we, are, we, why we can't be one of those young, scrappy teams drafting better in the next phase, and regardless of the Chicago Bulls, from now on, I would say this, the front office has to hit on three of their next first four, first round picks. Keep in mind, we have all of our first round picks other than the one that we owe out to the San Antonio Spurs, and we could possibly keep that if we do bottom out and it ends up being a top 10 pick. So this Bulls team has to start hitting on draft picks. We have to. It's not an if, and, or but about it. If this team is going to be a team that can eventually get to where we, where we want to be, dra- drafting better overall is going to have to be something that we have to do. So Billy Donovan, AK, Eversley, these are all aspects of where we sit right now that I don't necessarily feel the most confident in moving into whatever this next stage for the Chicago Bulls is because those aspects of this, those are foundational parts of a franchise. Your coaching and your front office because your front office is the one that brings them together. They decide on the coach, they decide on the roster, they decide on who we're going to draft. Until those aspects get better, the Bulls are going to be stay around this area and it's not going to change anytime soon. So for the Bulls to really get to the place that as fans we deserve, we need better coaching. We need better development. We need better drafts. We need to hit on these things. And until we do, it's going to be a tough time around Chicagoland. And let's hope that those things can improve. Now, with those things said, we do have a game tonight against the Orlando Magic. And this was a team, again, a very winnable game we had Thursday night that we did not uh, pull out. We're still at home. Pull out. Wow. Uh, But we're still at home. And it was a winnable game. The Bulls played terrible through it, but it still was a winnable game. And so what the Bulls are going to have to do coming into this game, still with some home cooking, is A, have some damn pride about the way that you go out of business. I want to see a team that comes out with some edge in this game. We still could possibly be without DeMar DeRozan. Billy Donovan said it's still to be determined whatever's going on with with DeMar DeRozan. So there you go. We have to shoot the ball better. We have to limit those turnovers. Those two things are must first before anything else, right? If we can still get to the point of forcing turnovers ourselves and scoring off that, rebound the ball better, especially for a team that's missing some pieces on the front line, Nikola Vucevic and Zach Levine can't continue to be outplayed. They can't at their position. They can't be. We cannot have another game in which Zach Levine has single-digit field goals throughout most of the game. It can't, and he he only finished with six field goals made overall in the last game. We need better from Zach Levine. As long as Zach Levine is on this roster, we need better for him. He constantly talks about his job is to go out there and win. Go out there and play some winning basketball then, Zach. Same thing with Nikola Vucevic. You have to be able to take advantage of mismatches that you have, and overall, we need better shooting from Kobe White. We need more from Kobe. Torrey Craig brought some solid shooting and, 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 and playing in his role and what he did. And if Patrick Williams gets another start, which I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Billy Donovan goes a different route with that starting lineup, we'll end up seeing what comes out of it. But we need better production from everybody on this team, from top to bottom. We need that. Andre Drummond and, and Alice Crusoe were the only two that I walk away and say, if they repeat exactly how they played last game, I'm cool with it. Everybody else needs to play better. We need to perform better. And we also need to dig in defensively. We showed some flashes of digging in defensively in that last game that made a lot of Bulls fans realize how we can play defensively. But we need that through four quarters, right? Especially if you're not going to be a team that can shoot the ball effectively. You have to lock in and dig in defensively. And we need to see that from this Chicago Bulls team tonight as well against the Orlando Magic team. 
Will we get it? That's the biggest question. But we we know that this team has the capability to do it. This Magic team has been in Chicago now. They probably haven't left at all, right? They've been chilling. They've been sitting in your city. They've been sitting there with the wind. Come out and show some damn pride tonight. That's what I want to see from the Chicago Bulls. And let's hope that we can get it because if not, probably going to be Petty Roosevelt hosting the post-game show tonight. But thank you guys once again so much for tuning in to the episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.